Good morning. Good morning. And welcome everybody to worship here at Good Shepherd Anglican Church on Treaty 6 territory in Edmonton, Alberta. Whether you are joining us from home this morning, February 13th, 2022, you're here in person, or you're watching a recording of this service later, we are very happy that you're here. If you are worshiping from home, Reverend Tom and Linda will be your guide through this service. Please do write to them in the chat if you're having any challenges at all. Today is a Green Growing Sunday, our once a month takeover of the service by the children of this parish. We've got lots of fun songs, most of which have motions. So I would encourage all adults to access your inner child and join in the motions, get your energy up and get ready for us to worship our God with music and dance as well as in our hearts. And folks at home, I can't see you, but Reverend Tom and Linda can. And they'll tell me after if you guys did all the motions. So please join in even from home. Let's get our energy up and excited and let's give our praise to our God as our worship begins at the sound of a bell. Rejoice and leap for joy, for behold, your reward is great in heaven. Oh, come, let us worship. Please join in singing our opening hymn, Every Praise. of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you. 
Please let us join in singing our opening prayer. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, whose Son, Jesus Christ, healed the sick and restored them to wholeness of life, look with compassion on the anguish of the world, and by your power make whole all peoples and nations through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for readings from Holy Scripture. Our first reading will be read for us by Aaron. Is that right, Aaron? That's not the one? Which one were you practicing? The second one. Zara, are you reading the first one? Oh, okay. We have two on the second. Can you read the first one for us? Go ahead. A reading from the book of Jeremiah. Thus says the Lord, Cursed are those who trust in mere mortals and make mere flesh their strength, whose hearts turn away from the Lord. They shall be like a shrub in the desert and shall not see when relief comes. They shall live in the parched places of the wilderness, in an uninhabited salt land. Blessed are those who trust in the Lord, whose trust is the Lord. They shall be like a tree planted by water, setting out its roots by the stream. It shall not fear when he comes, and its leaves shall stay green. In the air of drought, it is not anxious, and it does not cease to bear fruit. The heart is devious above all else. It is perverse. Who can understand it? I, the Lord, test the mind and search the heart to give all according to their ways, according to the fruit of their doings. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please pray with me, Psalm 1, by reading the verses on the screen in front of you in bold. Happy are they who have not walked in the counsel of the wicked. And they sat in the seats of the scornful. Their delight is in the law of the Lord. And they meditate on this law day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water bearing fruit in due season, with leaves that do not wither, everything they do shall prosper. It is not so with the wicked. They are like chaff which the wind blows away. Therefore the wicked shall not stand upright when judgment comes, nor the sinner in the counsel of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked is doomed. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. 
Now it's your turn, Aaron. A ring from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. Now from Christ has been proclaimed as raised from the dead. Now he can, no. how can someone say, how can some of you say there's no resurrection of the dead? If there's no resurrection of the dead, then Christ has not been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then our proclaim has been in vain, and your faith has been in vain. We even found to be mispresenting God because we testified of God that he raised. Christ Rome, mm -hmm. he whom he did not raise, if it is true that the dead are not raised for the dead, then Christ has not been raised. If Christ has not been raised, your faith has been futile and you're still in your sins. Then those who those also who have died in Christ have been perished. If, if, if for this life only we have hoped in Christ, we are all of all people must be pitied. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have died. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. John. Rise in body or spirit and join in all of our hand motions as we sing an old favorite, My Lighthouse.
gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. No, not according to John, according to Luke. <laughs> Jesus came down with the 12 apostles and stood on a level place with a crowd of his disciples and a great multitude of people from all Judea, Jerusalem, and the coast of Tyre and Sidon. They had come to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. And those who were troubled with unclean spirits were cured. And all in the crowd were trying to touch him, for power came out from him and healed all of them. Then he looked up at his disciples and said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you will be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, when they exclude you, revile you, and defame you on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy, for surely your reward is great in heaven, for that is what your, their ancestors did to the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are full now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who are laughing now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when all speak well of you, for that is what their ancestors did to the false prophets. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Today, Jesus is speaking to his disciples and he says that some groups of people are blessed. There were three people, he, types of people he said were blessed in the sermon today. Do you remember what they were? Can anybody call it out? It doesn't have to be a kid, it can be a grown up. What was the first one? Blessed are the... Poor! Excellent. Blessed are you who are poor. Excellent. What was the second one? Does anybody remember? The hungry. Yes. All right. And one more group. Anybody remember? Blessed are you who weep. What does it mean to weep? To cry, to be sad. Yeah. Thank you, Talisa. That's better than the like little tracks of tears I've been there. Yeah. To cry to weep. Now, are those the kind of people that we expect would be blessed? Or is that surprising to us that they're blessed? What does it mean to be blessed anyway? Do we know what it means to be blessed? Anybody have any ideas? You can raise your hand if you're in person or type it in the chat. If you're joining us from home, maybe somebody can share with us if you're typing in the chat. Anybody in person? What does it mean to be blessed? Any guesses? No, nope. you're, you're favored, okay? To be favored means that God loves you very, very much. And God holds you very close to God's heart. So you're favored. You are loved by God. What else could blessing mean? What does it mean to be blessed? Yes? Emily says lucky. Yes, absolutely. Sometimes we translate this word blessed as happy. And so lucky and happy, I think, go together. Thank you, Emily. That's good. Yes, to be happy. Anything else that we think about being blessed? Blessed is to be loved. Very good, Betty Ann. Thank you. So it's to be lucky or happy. Yes, over there. Alive. alive. Okay, to be blessed is to be alive. Excellent. So it is to be happy. It is to be loved. It is to be alive. It is to be favored by God and very close to God. I want you to keep thinking about that, that definition of blessing, as I'm going to go in a whole other direction, but I'm hoping this will help us understand. In order to help us understand the lesson today, I made something for us. Can anybody tell what I made? Bread. Now, just from looking at it and maybe from smelling it, can you tell me what do you think is the most important ingredient in this bread? Quick giving away the answer. 
What do you think is the most important or the, the most prominent element in this bread? Okay. To me, it smells like salt and like olive oil. What do you think the ingredient there's the most of, that I put the most of in here? Flour, you're right about that. The love. <laughs> yes, I did. I definitely filled it up with love. Can you smell? The dough, yeah, the dough is made mostly of flour. And so some folks, we had a lot of bakers in this congregation, already know that just because flour is the most, uh, the majority ingredient in here, just because we have lots and lots of flour in here, that doesn't mean it's the most important. The most important ingredient is the yeast. Have you guys seen yeast before? You guys have seen yeast? It's just this teeny tiny little element, so tiny. You can see it. This is actually alive. It is a creature that is alive. And when you feed it, which I did with some honey in this bread, then it helps make the bread rise. No, nope, that's good. So you see how teeny it is. Jaden, do you wanna see? See how teeny it is? But the yeast is by far the most important ingredient in the bread. But it's not what we would expect. Just like Jesus saying that the poor are the most favored that the hungry are the most loved, that people who are crying are the ones who are the closest to God's heart and favored by God. That's not what we would expect. Jesus goes on and he also has some words of woe. What does woe mean? Does anybody know what woe means? Lucas, shame could mean shame, yes. Sorrow, sadness, absolutely. What else? Yes. Guilty, it could mean guilty. Yes, Alex. Pity, yes, yes, exactly. Woe means something that is sad or maybe something that is shameful. And so who does Jesus call woes on in this passage? Does anybody remember? To the rich, yes, Alex. To the ones that are being praised by others. And so Jesus, what he does here, just like the flour and the yeast, he takes our ideas about what is most important and what it is that makes us the happiest and what it is that draws us closest to the love of God, and he turns them on their head. So friends, what I would say to you today is that when you are sad, when you are weeping, when you are feeling hungry, when you are feeling like you are so poor that you are down and out that nothing good can happen for you, that is the moment when you are the closest to the love of God, when you are the most favored by God, when God cares for you so deeply and wishes to just wrap you up in God's arms. And the moments when you feel good, when you feel like I've got this, and I've got all my best friends around me and I am laughing and my life is so good. Those are the moments when we are the most tempted to look away from God. When we are the most tempted to say, I did all of this on my own. I don't need other people around me and I don't need to take care of other people. So what do you think Jesus might be telling us then about what we should do for the people who are poor and the people who are unhappy, the people who are hungry. Is there anything that Jesus might be saying? 
They are blessed. Yes, Emily. That they might get food. Yes, absolutely. So we could take care of people who are in that situation. But also we could listen to people who are in that situation. And we could believe that they have something to teach us about God because they are close to God. And what about people who are feeling very rich, who are laughing, who are feeling very good about what's going on? What should we look at when it comes to those folks? We may identify in one group or another at different times in our lives. I think what God is saying, what Jesus is saying to us today is not to rely on those things and always to remember God and to look for God in the places God has promised to be, which is with the poor, which is with the hungry, which is with those who are weeping. If we seek God, then that is where we should look. And so I would like to invite us now to pray this is a repeat after me prayer. This is a repeat after me prayer. Dear God. Dear God. Thank you. Thank you. For loving us. For loving us. For blessing us. For blessing us. For favoring us. For favoring us. Help us. Help us. To look for you. To look for you. Where you have promised to be found. Where you have promised to be found. With the poor with the poor, with the hungry, with the hungry, with those who weep, with those who weep. In Jesus name. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. All right. I do have some pieces of bread that have been individually packaged. So if anybody would like a little piece of bread, I would be very happy to share. Anybody? Maybe after church, you can pick that up. Okay, we can look for that after church. Malachi, you want yours right now? There you go. Erin, you want one? Okay. Oh, Emily wants one too. And Emily. I can cut up more. I just, these are the ones that I got ready. Thank you. All right. Here we go. Oh, too over here. Is that for me? Oh, thank you so very much. I love it. Thank you. All right. As we always do following the sermon, we come into our time of professing our faith. On Green Growing Sundays, we profess our faith using the words of the Children's Creed, which comes to us from a resource called Shore to Shore. I'll give the soundboard just a second to get the slides to move forward. We believe in one God who loves us and wants us to love each other. This is our God. We believe in Jesus who cared for children and held them in his arms. He wanted a world where everyone could live together in peace. This is Jesus Christ. We believe in the Holy Spirit who keeps working with us until everything is good and true. This is the Holy Spirit. We can be the church which reminds people of God when because we love each other. This we believe, amen. As we come into our time of prayer, I invite you to adopt whatever position you find most prayerful, whether that's standing, sitting, or kneeling. And Laura's gonna come up here and help me pray. Or Lynn's gonna pass out some stones, I think, for the prayers. All right. Let's take just a minute in quiet while we wait for Raylan to bring back the stones. Okay. Now it's time to pray. Prayer helps connect us to the source of all life and light, Jesus. Jesus loves to hear about how happy we are. When good things happen, we tell him about them and say thank you. Jesus loves us 
And he also cares when we are feeling sad or mad, when things in our lives feel heavy and hard to carry. Jesus wants to help us carry the big feelings that weigh us down. We might be afraid to ask for help and not want to bother him, but Jesus teaches us that he will always want to help us, no matter what. With Ray Lynn, many of you have made your own stones. Each month, we will ask you to think about what the stone represents this month. Maybe you're feeling scared about COVID-19 or about doing well in school or something else. Maybe you miss getting to see somebody you love. Let's take a minute now to be very, very quiet and think about what heavy stone you might be carrying right now. If you listen hard, your heart will tell you. Reverend Jordan and Ray Lynn will come and get your stones. When you hand them to us, know that God takes away all your sadness and shares the heaviness of your worries. Stone to Jesus. You want to hold it for a time and hold it? When you're ready, come and put it on the altar, okay? Now that we have placed our prayers on the altar, let's say a prayer that thanks God for always listening to us. This is a repeat after me prayer. This is a repeat yeah. after me prayer. Dear God. Dear God. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you. For your promise. For your promise. To always listen to us. To always listen to us. Remind us. Remind, remind us, us. That you are always ready to hear. That you are always ready to hear. When we need your help. When, when we need your help. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Please offer to one another a distanced sign of peace. Within your cohort, of course, you can hug or give a handshake, but outside, just wave or offer a sign of peace. If you're at home, type into the chat. Your greetings of peace to the rest of the congregation. Thank you all so very much. Good morning and welcome again to Good Shepherd. If you're visiting today, we're very happy that you're here. Please do introduce yourself to us in the chat and here online or after the service so we can get to know you. Are there any birthdays or anniversaries to be blessed this week? In person, please raise your hand or if you're at home, you can type into the chat. Alert Reverend Tom and Linda to pray for you. I'm not seeing any hands in person. Just a few announcements this week. Happy Green Growing Sunday to everybody. We are so glad to see so many children of the parish back in worship again. We hope that you will join us after church. Raylan, are sledding conditions possible? Okay, cool. So join Raylan at the park after church for some sledding, uh, possibly your last sledding chance of the winter. This winter has been wild. 
Um, next week, kids check-ins are coming back to in-person with a kids table available in the Narthex during church rather than our online at noon check-ins that have been going on uh, for the last month or so. So please remember that kids check-ins move back to in-person. I'm seeing some joy at the back of the church there. <laughs> Um, speaking of children's ministry, stay tuned for announcements regarding uh, our Lent program for children through the diocese. It will be based on the movie Encanto. So if you enjoyed that movie, stay tuned for some exciting children's ministry related to that, as well as the fact that Raylan has been very hard at work getting us ready to decorate our upstairs for the youth drop-in center. She is seeking some volunteers to help her out. You're not committing to a specific time or a specific activity at this moment in time. You're just letting her know that generally, if you are available, you would be willing to help, particularly at this time. What I'm aware of is she needs help with painting and assembling IKEA furniture. Is that right, Raylan? All right, so if you can paint and if you can assemble IKEA furniture and you're willing to give us some of your time for that, talk to Raylan after church today. Lent is quickly approaching, and I want to invite all of you to spend that season drawing near to God as God draws near to us. Won't you immerse yourself in prayer and study this Lent to get to know God and understand just how much God loves you? You will be very welcome. We have Zoom morning and evening prayer five days a week. Um, on Mondays, Tuesdays, and Fridays, it's morning prayer. On Thursdays, it's evening prayer. And on Wednesdays, it's Holy Eucharist here in this room. Also on Wednesday evenings, we'll be studying the book Theology, The Basics by Alistair McGrath. This book covers all of the basic foundational beliefs of the Christian faith, and we'll talk about what those beliefs mean for our lives. You don't have to buy the book in order to participate. You can just come for the discussion and you can share your ideas based on your understanding of the creed, based on the scriptures, but it will make it easier. So if you would like to go ahead and order Theology, The Basics by Alistair McGrath and join us Wednesdays at seven as we seek to know the God who loves us so much. Finally, just a reminder to everyone that the city of Edmonton mask by law for all people over the age of two remains in effect at this time. Further guidance from the diocese will be forthcoming regarding steps for after the provincial measures have been lifted March 1st, but for the time being, remember, we remain subject both to municipal law as well as to our commitment to walking together with other Anglicans throughout the diocese in seeking best practices to protect the vulnerable in our communities. You may feel very happy about the province lifting measures. You may feel really sad or really worried about it. Or maybe like me, you have maybe some mixed feelings, some, some joy and some concern at the exact same time. I invite you to please continue to love your neighbor as yourself as you have been by getting vaccinated, by getting boosted if you have not yet been boosted and continuing to wear a mask until such time as we receive guidance that they may be removed in this public space. In this way, you follow the example of our Lord Jesus Christ, who came not to be served, but to serve. As we come into this time of Holy Eucharist now, I invite you to join in singing our offertory hymn, Lord, listen to your children pray.
Eternal God, you are the strength of the weak and the comfort of sufferers. Receive all we offer you this day. Turn our sickness into health and our sorrow into joy. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of heaven and earth. By water and the Holy Spirit, you have made us a holy people in Jesus Christ, our Lord. You renew that mystery in bread and wine and nourish us to show forth your glory in all the world. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the holy people who have served you in every age, we raise our voices to proclaim the glory of your name. Thanks to you, Lord our God, for the goodness and love you have made known to us in creation, in calling Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, a death he freely accepted, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you and broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, Father, according to his command, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we made acceptable in him may be sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, Reconcile all things in Christ and make them new, 
and bring us to that city of light where you dwell with all your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Creator of all, you gave us golden fields of wheat, whose many grains we have gathered and made into this one bread. Be gathered from the ends of the earth into your kingdom. The gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. For those in person, I invite you now to come and receive Holy Communion. For those at home, please do welcome Jesus into your heart. Dear Jesus, we believe that you are truly present in the most holy sacrament. We love you above all things, and we desire to receive you into our souls. Since we cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into our hearts. We embrace you as being already there and unite ourselves wholly to you. Never permit us to be separated from you. Amen.
Please rise, embody your spirit, and let us pray. God of tender care, in this Eucharist, we celebrate your love for us and for all people. May we show your love in our lives and know that its fulfillment in your presence. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Glory to God whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we could ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. May the God who shakes heaven and earth, whom death could not contain, who lives to disturb and heal us, bless you with power to go forth and proclaim the gospel. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Please join in singing our closing hymn, I Smile.
the Lord.